So this is exactly why I said that I do not recommend anyone participating in pump and dumps, guys. Look at that huge, huge wick and huge red candle there. In the long run, you will not be a winning trader if you try to participate in these things. It's just not gonna happen. Things like this is exactly why most traders are not profitable. Everybody always wants easy money. Everybody's looking for the shortcut. Nobody wants to put in the work and this is not sustainable. There are no shortcuts in trading guys. Play the game the right way or you will get played, period. Hey, what's up, Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials, and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful traders. If you're new here, the goal of this channel is to empower you guys with the resources and knowledge to take you to that next level. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. Also, make sure to turn on that bell notification so that you guys are notified as soon as these videos go live. So in today's video, we are covering XRP, of course, we're going to talk about this. Uh, then we're going to look back over on Doge, which we spoke about on Friday's video. Then, of course, we're talking about uh, some Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're doing a trade recap on what happened over the weekend. And then we're giving you guys some trade setups for this week to hopefully make you guys some profits. Let's jump right in. Alrighty guys, so let's start off with the trade recap from the weekend. So we spoke about two levels on Friday. The first one was above 38,000, right? So that trade never happened. As you guys can see, we never went back above 38,000 after I told you guys that setup after that video came out. And then the second one was above 35, right? So we wanted basically to fall and then jump back up. You could have made some profits here if you did take this one. This one went up to about 35 and some change, but we didn't end up taking any trade there because there just wasn't momentum. And then the last trade setup that we gave you guys here was if it continued down, we were expecting it to hold right here, right? Which was that 33K range. And if you took those that trade on the bounce up, you could have definitely made some profits as it went from 33 all the way up to 34, almost 35K, right? So that was the profitable trade of the weekend in Bitcoin in Ethereum basically the same thing we didn't hit the breakout trade so we didn't take that and we spoke about it consolidating in this range right that's exactly what it's been doing and then we spoke about entering here at that 1300 level which is currently where it's at it's right at that 1300 level so if you did enter on one of these here you could have definitely made some profits there so that was the only profitable trade that actually triggered from the setups that we gave you in ethereum on friday all right, so the whole pump this weekend had really not much to do with the whole Reddit and Wall Street bet type. It had to do with this right here. So Ripple, let's say Ripple uh, files response to SEC complaint over XRP sales, right? So that's what actually pumped up the XRP price over the weekend. It really had zero to do with the whole Wall Street bets pump and dump group, right? So they responded to the lawsuit saying that the Securities and Exchange Commission's opinion that XRP cryptocurrency is a security is false, right? So the SEC contests that Ripple's digital coin counts as a security and as such, the SEC is allowed to regulate it. According to the SEC, Ripple had misled investors by selling over $1 billion without registering with the agency. But Ripple says that that's not the case as XRP is instead a medium of exchange of virtual coin used in order to conduct both international and domestic transactions. It moves value between jurisdictions and facilitating transactions. And so the company says the SEC doesn't have the right to treat it as a security. Ripple says XRP is a fast scalable asset and works ideally for payment processing. All right, so that was the cause of the major pump here in ripple right then people started with this whole thing you know 8 30 a.m pump on ripple that they were going to take it to a dollar etc etc i answered questions about it yesterday 
telling you guys, I do not recommend uh, participating in any type of pump and, and dump groups or ideas or anything like that. And this is exactly why, guys. This is the exact result of what happens when you try to participate in that. Guys, this is if you're going to enter into this type of thing, this is the type of thing that you buy the rumor and you sell the news. So you would have bought down here, right? Or even down here, and you would have sold by the time 8.30 a.m. came around, right? That's when you're going to get dumped on, right? So by 8.30 a.m., everybody got dumped on. So everybody was holding, everybody was, was saying to hold the line at 8.30 a.m. And this is a result, everybody got dumped on, right? So the main thing that people were missing from this, talking about wait till 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time when the U.S. wakes up, guys, XRP is delisted on almost every us exchange okay the majority of circulation in xrp is outside of the us so that just obviously did not make sense and it was an obvious attempt to just keep people holding so that the real people that started this whole thing in the group could just dump on you so if you guys did not learn your lesson over the week with what happened in doge as you guys can see, uh, people bought towards the top and got dumped on. And now more of the same is, is just happened today with XRP. So if you didn't listen to me with Doge, listen to me with XRP. Guys, do not participate in this. Do not participate in pump and dumps. It's stupid. You're not going to make money. It's not sustainable. You're going to get dumped on. Somebody always gets dumped on. Of course, you can make money. If you're one of the lucky ones to get in early and out early, but if you don't have a plan, you're most probably going to get dumped on and you're most probably going to lose money. All right, guys. So on Bitcoin, first, we're going to look at the monthly candles, right? We always at the at the end of every month or the beginning of the next month, you always want to look at the monthly candles, how the candle closed. And this can sometimes give you a an idea of what is to come. Uh, you know, it's obviously a possibility of what's to come, but it's still an idea of what could come in the next month, uh, depending on how the candle closes. So in Bitcoin, this is the candle, right? So in Bitcoin, this is a candle. This is how it closed, right? So look at that candle. Look at this candle. Look at this candle. Do you see similarities between the three of these? So this is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on because the last two times that we had this type of candle close on Bitcoin, after that, the price went down, right? So you see on both of them, on, in both of these occasions, the price went down. So not saying that the price is gonna be bearish, but it's a scenario that we have to always keep an open mind to. And there's a possibility that we could start February off kind of bearish. Or it might either be bearish like it did here after the same type of candle. Or, you know, we might get a candle kind of like this, which is like an indecisive candle, right? Um, so something like this would be kind of an indecisive candle. And that would mean that we stay around 30K, you know. But if we get something like this, this is more of a 20 to 30% drop in the market overall. That would mean that we probably drop back down to like... Um, 30,000 or something. But if you kind of put it here to, you know, compare it here, it kind of dropped to where the previous candle opened. So if we were to drop here, we were if we were to say that this could happen again, we would drop to the previous candle open, which is around 28,000. So that 28,000 line is where would be the possibility to drop if we were to see something like this happen again now this one as you guys can see on this one this one was only a six percent drop so this one didn't even make it all the way down however over the next three months it did go right back down to the opening of this big candle so again over the next month we'll see through february we're going to see what we can expect going forward but um what this points to as a possibility not doesn't mean that it's going to have it's a possibility of what could happen it would be pointing to a possible pullback down here i can't make lines for some reason but a possible pullback down to that twenty-eight thousand 
range, all right? Just something that I wanna state and put in here just so that everyone's aware of this because, and this is just due to the way that this candle closed compared to when the times that it's closed before in the past, okay? So like we spoke about on Friday's video when we were getting rejected over here, so I said that unless we broke back out of 38,000, uh, that we're probably going back down, right? Now, I expected us to stay at that 35K range since we had so much support, but we did get knocked down back under it, but we're on top of this Fibonacci level, which is that 50% level, right? So that is good news. We were able to flip that with that big push, right? So as you guys can see before, the whole week before we were under that right we had that was resistance and now with that big push from elon we were able to break out way up here and then on the return uh we were able to flip that resistance and now use it as some support there so i remember i spoke about this right here this was the descending resistance line before and now is a descending support right so we're currently bouncing right on there and kind of holding on plus we have this fibonacci level right down here so we need for both of these to hold on right so as long as these hold we should be good we just need to break back above 35k so we're currently consolidating here Hopefully, as long as we hold above this, then we should be fine and we should soon break back out above this. But if we do fall below that 33, 32 range, then we can expect to possibly retest this 30,000, you know, number that we've retested so many times already, right? In Ethereum, as you guys can see, we ran back up to 1400 and then as, you know, on Friday's video, we spoke about consolidation within this zone and that's exactly what's happened as you can see we got rejected off that 1400 got pulled back because bitcoin pulled back and now we've been hanging out at the 1300 range so as long as we're here we're good right we just gotta hold this line here there's a lot of support here as you guys can see it's a very very high area of interest so I'm not too worried about it. I feel good buying here and I feel good as far as our the probability of us bouncing back up from here. So if we head back up, of course, we have the 1400 as the resistance and then we have the previous all time highs resistance. If we were to fall down from here, then we're looking at this 1200 level again where we saw a lot of buying there and it's been a lot of resistance, it's been support. So, and then we have the Fibonacci level there as well. So um, those are the levels that we're currently watching right now in Ethereum. All right, next guys, we're gonna talk about the trade setups that we're gonna be looking at this week to hopefully make us and you guys both some profits during this trading week. If you're enjoying what you're watching so far, make sure to give us a sub, guys. Make sure to give us a like and drop a comment. Let us know if you have any questions. We're always happy to help, always happy to answer whatever you're wondering, if we have the answer, of course. So hit that sub button, hit that like, and let's dive into some trade setups for this week. Alrighty, guys. So like, like we spoke about on Friday, we've been right here at this uh, support where we have this descending support. We also have this Fibonacci support. We have the big 33,000 number as support. So the first entry, of course, we're looking for is that 33K. That's gonna be the support entry that we're watching, which would be right down here. We like that support entry there. As always, we're entering on the bounce back up. We're never entering on the way down because we don't know when that's gonna, you know, when it's gonna go back up. As far as a breakout here, then we're watching, we're obviously watching this area right here. We want a break above that 35,000 range. As you guys can see, look exactly, look what happened here when we broke 35,000. We ran all the way up to 38. And we believe that on a break of this, we will do the same thing. So our target will be that 38,000 range. For the other support entry that we'll be watching in the event that we break down, is that $30,000 range, of course, where we've bounced a bunch of times, right? So we 
the same thing guys you want to buy on the bounce back up you don't want to buy on the way down and that's all we're going to be watching for this week in bitcoin in ethereum as you guys can see we're currently on a very strong support there where we've had a lot of different touches here so this is a fourth touch on the same support right so that makes it a very very strong spot to enter a trade we're looking to get in as close to 1300 as possible ideally we want that bounce up right but um anything in that range is good as far as a breakout now for a breakout we want we're going to be using 1350 as that first breakout entry because we just don't like that 1400 range right where there's so much consolidation there, so many fake outs that we're not looking to take any trades at 1400, but we will be looking to take trades above that all time high. So um, the entries 1300, 1350 and above all time high for Ethereum. That is pretty much it guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys take these trades and make some profits with them this week. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that like and make sure to drop a comment if you have any questions about these trade setups or about any of the, the price analysis that we just did on these coins today. I hope to have an amazing, amazing month, guys. I hope you guys do as well. Let's have a great week to start this month off on the right foot. As always, I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace and love.